Hello, everyone. Uh, it, oh, what is this? It's St. Patrick's Day is what it is. Happy St. Patrick's Day to uh, uh, all of our... Uh, yeah, all of our Irish friends and, and those with connections to the Emerald Isle, I hope you're having a wonderful uh, St. Paddy's Day and um, you're not too drunk yet. You know, just wait <laughs> until after the show. That'd be cool. Um, so, yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day. It's March 17th, 2023. It's just gone 7 p.m. here in the UK. It's 11 a.m. on the west coast of the United States and 2 p.m. on the east. You know what the time is. You've all got clocks and watches. They haven't been, you know, around for that long. Um, welcome, and I hope that uh, you have all been well since last we saw each other. Um, we uh, don't have any, uh, like, featured guests, but we do have a very special guest today um, who is going to be standing in um, for our Mr. Simpson, who's just going to take a few weeks off as a bit of a breather. Uh, he's got some stuff on, so um, he's going to be taking a step back. So we'll be uh, hopefully sort of rotating people coming through and, and just having a laugh and a giggle. I might have to actually take a week or two off what with the impending house move, which is, uh, of course, still progressing. Um, before we get to speak to our, um, our fellow guests and also start talking about some of the news topics of the week, um, let me just remind you that if you like what you see, please click the thumb icon. If you dislike it, click the other one. That's fine. Um, you know, we'd, we'd rather you, you know, didn't. But uh, um, of course, you can also comment on the show. You can comment uh, over there or under there, depends on where, where it is on your screen, uh, in the live chat on YouTube, Twitch, and also Facebook. Uh, you can watch us on all of those, plus Twitter as well. Um, subscribe if you haven't already to get reminded of all the shows. And, of course, if you know other people who would like um, what we do, then, of course, please do share the link around. Um, if you want to donate to us, you can do that through YouTube, Super Chat, and Super Stickers. Of course, you can also donate through our paypal account which uh, a clickable link is in the description underneath the video that you're watching at the moment uh, as i said before we're across twitter facebook instagram and of course here on youtube and it's all the same handle at pro Synth network so please do come and join us over there and engage with us on our social media channels and we'll try and engage back if you have a question for anybody on the show, um, please just stick a big capital Q in front of it, which just makes us aware that a uh, question has come in and we can just drop that into the bucket and pull that out of the hat a little bit later on. And that, I think, ladies and germs, is all of the business out of the way. So we can just get rid of all of that on the screen. We can get down to the funky stuff. Um, big hi to everybody that's in the chat. Um, I would love to name you all, but we'd be here for the duration of the show. Thank you, Mr. Jason Crouch, for that first donation of the evening for the uh, Perringer Emergency Chip Fund. Oh, boy, do they need it. And uh, we'll, we'll come to that in just a moment. Uh, but thank you ever so much, Jason. It's much appreciated. And um, also, I just want to say thank you to our moderator in the chat i believe andrew brooks is there and of course ben from the fabulous musines website if you haven't visited musines why not get over there it's a fantastic archive of music technology literature and it's completely free of charge and if you have anything that you need to donate uh, like old magazines i know ben sometimes uh, puts requests out for certain issues you know you can do that and and help contribute to that wonderful uh, repository of fantastic information and lovely retro adverts I re i'm there for the adverts most of the time anyway um let's bring in uh, one of our regulars he's uh, just been fixing loads of memory modes so testing them overnight and and rediscovering a passion for the sound of that wonderful keyboard it's the one and only mr kent spong jesus Begar, how are you doing now hey how, how, how are you how are you i can do i can do it because i'm half irish <laughs> yeah all right there, there you go yeah what's the other half i'm only half drunk so okay <laughs> um yeah so yeah there you go yeah all good 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 and the memory mog is still working memory... still in tune go on give us a blast <laughs> excellent there you go and you've, you've you've got to hang on to that for a week now yeah well funny enough i was what talking a to a, a tech friend of mine yeah no um who said oh you know i've got a, an old wreck one out it out in my shed i said well how much do you want for it then he said well there's not much of it i said well i've got some boards and some bits and i've got some knobs and some parts and a few bits and pieces i think i've got a loom for one somewhere he goes oh friend of quid i mean i'll get back to you on monday mm. i might see but the first memory mode kit and i mean kit yes <laughs> 
if you're listening, Korg kit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, it'll be the KS kit, the Kent's bomb yeah, kit, yeah. not the FS kit. It'll yeah. definitely be a one-off, and I'll have even less hair because I've been pulling it out and oh, bruises no, on that, my forehead. That'd be good. That'd be yeah. Good. Well, it, uh, yeah. yeah I, I'm sorry, but I've just fallen in love. Just, mm, it is and I, I've worked scene. on hundreds, and I've never, never really sort of noticed. Yeah. It's weird. There you go. There you go. Lovely. Good stuff. Good mm. to see you, mate, as always. Um, yeah, thank you. Before we uh, go to our special guest today, I just want to say thank you to the following people. Uh, Mr. Wagyu with 10 chuffs. Thank you very much. I once patted an Irish setter. That means I'm Irish. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mark Acker. Yeehaw. <laughs> Yeehaw. Um, 999. Thank you. A round of drinks from the moderator. Thank you very much. I'll put that in the, um, the super booth drinks fund for me and Ben when we go over in, uh, in May. Um, and uh, Andrew Brooks, uh, thank you. Top of the Mar and then yeah. Uh, five pounds from, <laughs> from Andrew. Thank you very much indeed, everyone. Um, your donations are gratefully received and uh, put to very good use. Uh, he says it does. No, it does. Really does. Uh, keeps us on the air. Um, now, normally um, we go over to our esteemed leader Ben Sims, but as I said, he's taking a little break, which uh, means that we can bring in some uh, really cool people and one such person has been on the show a number of times before um we've done specials with him uh and he's normally hard at work and popping in just through his lunch break uh to catch up with the last bit of the show but today he's got a rare day off and he's decided to spend it with us it's the one and the only dr manny fernandez hey good, good afternoon no, good morning actually isn't it it's still morning for you uh technically it's just past noon. Oh, it's just gone. Oh, of course, yes. Oh. It's yeah. Right now. Yes. yeah, we got that. Oh, no, of course, I've forgotten. savings time thing. Yes. Oh, yeah. do you know, I was going to put something in the advert on the thing, and I thought, oh, no. But I'm sure most of our watchers, uh, our viewers, are intelligent enough to understand the shift. We will. It will go back. So I think we go not this Sunday, but next Sunday. So, yeah. Anyway, look at you in your little synth cave. Yeah, in my, yeah, that is kind of very cavish or cockpitish lately, that is for sure. By the way, in your intro, you reminded me it was St. Patrick's Day, so I had to cobble together a real quick little uh, <clears throat> green. Oh, very mouth. good. A very uh, Yes, a patch cable uh, clover. Yeah, yeah lovely. <laughs> oh, nice T-shirt, by the way. I've just noticed that. Yeah. Groove synthesis. You know, I figured I'd uh, do a, I don't have a PSN shirt, so... No, no, we need to... Well, we'll sort, we will we'll sort, sort that, that out. out. We will yeah. definitely so, sort that sooner, out. Sooner mm. sooner. Later rather than sooner. Really. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, how have you been? I, I have been well. You know, good, good. I, uh, you know, taking a little break from the uh, day job, which is fun. Mm. So, it's going to be uh, hopefully representing well here in lieu of Ben. Nice. And, yeah. Uh, got a lot of fun stuff. And one of yeah. the things that hit is something near and dear to Kenneth and my heart. So, yes. We'll bring up uh, a lot of that later on. Yeah, so we'll have a chat about that for sure. Um, you've been doing a lot of hardware jams recently, putting out some videos on your yeah, channel. Yeah, that's kind of interesting how that happened. A little uh, uh, internet arm twisting by uh, <laughs> Brooks, Grace Griffin, and Inky. You know, I thought I'd go ahead and do that. And it, it's really funny. Um, that whole paradigm is inter interesting to me. And mm. the, the biggest, uh, how can I say, <sighs> contrast on how I go in and do that I'm so old school in the way that I work all right so everybody who's into that genre currently they have little boxes and mm -hmm. for everything that they have a button that does something I have a <laughs> I have a completely separate synthesizer that does what their one <laughs> button does so it's it's really funny I have this mountain of gear that literally could be in a box with 16 buttons but you know there you go there you go but it's been fun it's been fun Yes, lovely. And how's your Eurorack obsession? Because I think the last time you were on the show, you were really kind of getting into it. Have you been buying more? Um, I have not gotten anything recently with one exception, which is when they um, released the uh, the plets, plates oh, yes. uh, update um, with the FM thing. Of course, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, had, of I had to course do that. Did. Absolutely. Exactly. Um, but other than that, that's actually my first non-analog module in all this stuff. Oh, wow. Because, you know, I went very old school with the build on that. So mm. Yeah, you went all in on that stuff, didn't you? Yeah, well... <laughs> You know. Cool stuff, yeah. Excellent. Well, look, thank you ever so much for coming on. Uh, it's a real pleasure, as always. 
um, and we're hoping uh, we were hoping to actually ha uh, discuss uh, a particular instrument today which we will talk about it briefly uh, mm -hmm. but unfortunately UK um, customs put the kibosh on all of that and um, I don't know where it is at the moment it is in the UK but um, after spending um, a substantial amount of money to get it to clear customs it is on its way so we'll, mm. we'll maybe talk about that mm. in more detail in the coming weeks and we we, we do plan to do um, some, some more in-depth edition. stuff yeah yeah do a special edition thing like we did with their previous synthesizer mm -hmm. uh, which went down is actually one of our most popular um, videos uh, of all time so there you go mm. um, right okay so I think it's a good idea if we start off and we start going through some of the news we've got some interesting news topics and we've got one in particular as Manny alluded to um, that uh, him and Kent uh, have got a quite vested interest in of course that's the hydrosynth 2.0 so we'll be discussing that and finding out what you guys think of it because obviously you know i'm the one person on the planet that still doesn't have a hydrosynth so i have no skin in this game whatsoever i'm going to hand it all over to you so no pressure but um yeah we, i'd like we're to hear supposed your to point it in man and go Ooh. yeah unclean <laughs> <laughs> unclean so um yeah we'll be talking about that a little bit later on but i thought we would start off just to get it out of the way you know it's, it's like a bad smell you want to waft it out of the room um and it is uh this uh which literally dropped about two hours ago um and in in typical behringer fashion uh, they uh, they put a post up on their Facebook page and they have um, told, I wouldn't say it's an announcement, they've just snuck out the fact that they've been working on their version of the uh, Oberheim DMX, which they've called the Behringer BMX, which conjures up all sorts of images, images of mm -hmm. a young Nicole Kidman with frizzy red hair um, riding around performing tricks on her uh, bike. Um, not that I need any excuse to get Nicole Kidman in my head. Um, but, yeah, here we go. So it's the, the, the Behringer BMX. It's a prototype at the moment. There you go. That's what it looks like. Kind of follows on the left-hand side. It kind of follows what the original DMX did with the, um, was it 24 pads? And then the faders. And then on the right-hand side, you've got some filter stuff going on and there their wave designer effect and uh, some transport stuff. And then on the back, um, it's just kind of usual suspects, individual outs, a summed output, uh, triggers, sync, and MIDI and USB. Um, of course, because it's Behringer, we have no release date, we have no price, um, we have nothing, nothing to no go mind. on whatsoever. Um, so there you go. Um, the Behringer BMX. Of course, they did mention oh, at least a year ago, probably more, the LM drum, which was their going to be their version of the Lin drum, and that's still not appeared, and nobody knows what's going on with that. And then they just dropped this. So I don't know. Um, the Oberheim DMX, the original, of course, uh, staple drum machine of the likes of New Order, Pet Shop Boys, and many other uh, '80s acts um, of the day. Um, it's a it's a different sound i think as as i've uh, mentioned elsewhere it does sit at that top table of classic drum machines along with the lins and the trs and stuff like that but any interest in this i mean you know it's a kind of if, if they nail the sound and the behavior it could be quite interesting if they change the front panel <laughs> right and it's, 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 instead of going for subtle they've gone for here have a psychotic episode <laughs> Those Isn't pinstripes, it? yeah. Yeah, it's a bit sort of like, whoa, yeah. dude, back off. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do they call it? Is it hazing? When when, when you look at uh, mm. stripy things on a television set and it gets a weird yeah. effect, it does kind of have that about it, doesn't it? More ray yeah. patterns. Yeah, that sort of thing, yeah. Um, moiring, that's it. Yeah, more, yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, M-O-I-R-E, isn't it? Mm. Anyway, yeah. Um, but, no, I mean, I, I've got to say, I mean, as much as I am a, a critic um, of said company uh, at times I, I'm not always uber critical but the drum machines do interest me because I do have a you know a, a soft spot for drum machines and um, a yeah. DMX and a, a Lin are, have always been um, well out of my reach and I'd love to have one if this was a, a decent way of getting hold of one mm. uh, what do you think Manny any uh, any interest in that well in general um, I'm not a drum machine 
guy mm-hmm. because let's face it, every drum sound of every one of those instruments is available as samples. Very true. So I, I use a lot of drum samples. Um, now, to that point, if there's a certain workflow that you would like to emulate with an old piece of hardware, sure, go for it. Um, I will say the one hidden piece in some of the classic hardware, for sure, um, you know, some of the uh, drum machines over the years has have had some very magic swing settings. Yes. And yeah. stuff. Um, but outside of that, um, I don't particularly have a, a use for a drum machine, um, so it doesn't fall into my my alley. But mm-hmm. you know, if you got to have the DMX sound and that's your yeah. budget, go for it. Exactly. Yeah. No, I I, I I mentioned this about the Lin drum when it was, or you know, the LM drum. Sorry. Um, it's not just the sound; it is the way the machine handles those samples. And you know, the Lin famously. The snare has just got, it's got a tiny gap at the beginning that kind of just offsets it just enough to be really nice. <laughs> Same with the hi hats. The is um, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the hi hat like a continuous thing? And it's an envelope that gives you the the on and the off of the you know the hi hat or something like that. I think it's it's just the way it handles the samples is as much to do with the. The, the folklore around these machines is, is just you know the samples themselves um but uh, i don't know I'm, i we can't guess on the price we can't guess on availability and of course we can't guess on the sound because they've not provided anything it's typical behringer it's just like drip 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 and um, nothing material right. but yeah, yeah. And, but, and to that point you know i will never argue against a particular piece of gear that does one thing well mm-hmm. you know so if they can like I say, whether it is a drum machine, whatever. I mean, my studio would belie that fact. So there you go. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Um, watch this space or watch Behringer's social media spaces, which is where they do all of their announcements. There's there's no such thing as a Behringer press release. I've never seen one in all my time doing anything like this. So uh, yeah, interesting. Um, but yeah, BMX hybrid eight twelve bit sampling drum machine. I I guess that's going to follow. Um, the LM, or maybe they've dropped the LM. I don't know. Because I was interested when they announced the, the LM drum, knowing um, the uh, is this the the litigiousness of Mister Bruce Forat right. and his uh, he's you know super protective of anything to do with that. And I know that Roger still you know um, is protective of, of of certain aspects of his um, copyright or. Uh, intellectual property um maybe they have been legally persuaded to a- a- avoid going down that route who knows and maybe this is you know maybe they think oh well we can't we're probably going to get away with the the ubxa which still of course hasn't materialized is just another one to add to that list but anyway coming soon i guess behringer bmx let us know what you think about that in the chat of course uh, if you're watching on catch up just drop a comment uh, down below and uh, join in the discussion of course, you can also join in the discussion at the uh, Facebook group page, which, of course, uh, so you can just come join us and answer a couple of uh, preliminary questions to prove you're human, and then we'll let you in and you can have fun there. Right, uh, let's see. What else have we got? Oh, actually, do you know, I was going to set this up, and I'm actually going to do this because I think it, just to give you a flavour of what an actual Oberheim DMX sounds like, um, this is... Alex Ball and a DMX. Um, just so you know, you know that kind of classic sound. Let's just play a little bit of this. This is my Oberheim DX from around 1983. The DX is the little brother of the more famous DMX, and the two have different sounds. It's from the EEPROM era of drum machines and the samples are 8-bit and between 10 and 16 kilohertz depending on how you tune them. This means it has that very crunchy 80s sound that we all love. I've multi-sampled all the sounds at as many applicable tunings as possible and even recorded some bends and effects that are only possible to do on the hardware. I've organised those into a big... Yeah, you know, that's uh, Alex Ball's DX, not DMX. I forgot to uh, to make that uh, clear, but yeah, you get you get the idea. It's a lovely sounding machine, and say so it's used all over um, classic 
electro pop tunes of the 80s mm. right um so let's see what have we got next let's talk about this this is um this is an interesting piece of news from waldorf uh, over in germany and that is that they have um released a new version of the waldorf m this is the waldorf m 16 voice um, which retails for around 2,300 euros, is currently in stock, according to the Waldorf website there. And the only real difference between this and the previous one is that it's got an extra eight voices and a little badge that tells you so. Uh, you can also buy the boards to expand your existing eight-voice Waldorf M to the 16-voice, and I believe that just is the uh, the only difference between the two. Um Again, this I have no skin in this game. I haven't heard this in in real life. I haven't played with one of these. Uh, Manny, I know you're you're a big fan. What's that you've got just over to your left, mounted on the? That's the iridium, is it? That is an iridium. That is yeah. correct. Yeah. So um, similar, you know, sort of ballpark, I guess. Um, but but yeah, the a, lot 16- of, well, a lot of similarities to it. Um, mm. Obviously, the M is more dedicated to sort of the more <coughs> pure PPG lineage. Mm-hmm. Um, in in that aspect of it, um, because it's got the analog filters, the analog VCAs mm-hmm. on top of the lid, and obviously the iridium is all all digital. But yeah, I like playing in wavetable spaces. Uh, yeah, as you can see, um, the twist for me, um, which is why I like this over something like the M, although the M is a great sounding machine, is what you can do with wavetables in this and that that aren't mm-hmm. in the traditional engine. Right. But um, no, I, I, it's, it sounds great. It's got a great legacy. I know a lot of people that have them and love them. And so the mm. fact that you got the 16 there, so nice. You say that you can do more with wavetables in something like the third wave. What, like, like what, for example? I can bring a wavetable into the FM kernel and use my wavetable as a operator. Okay. There you go. Mm. There you go. That's we we knew the FM was going to come into there somewhere. Come in somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know. No, excellent stuff. Okay, um, and of course mixing the you know all the various engines you know because you can layer the yeah. VA with the granulator and you know all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah, there's a lot of yeah. a lot of power in that. Cool stuff. Ken, any thoughts on the the M16 voice? Did, did it ever appeal to you? Um, no. No, no, no. Um, uh, no, only because I'm swamped. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's never um, stopped me. Yeah, do you know what I mean? You keep because uh, yeah, I mean every day I'm seeing stuff and going, "Whoa, damn! Oh, I'd like that." But where am I putting it? And when am I going to find the time to use it? Yeah, so I'm still getting trying to get to grips with all this um, soma gear. Oh right, yes. Oh, course. that drum machine. Oi. <laughs> Yeah, you really have to sit down and work that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still trying to figure it out. So yeah, I mean, it looks good. Um, probably another uh, reason why I'm going to get people complaining about Brexit, I suppose. Um, True. Trying to get into the country. Uh, so it's it's funny because I mean, this adding the voice, you can add the voices yourself with an upgrade. Yes. Um. I don't, yeah, what, when, why didn't they just do? Why why have they made a whole other machine again? Well, I guess they're just it's they're going to take their existing tooling and 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 stuff, and then just add the you know add the card in and stick it in the box, a bit like they did with um, what was it uh, the Korg Z one? I think had a, a six yeah. voice expansion that eventually yep. they they did the Z one EX, EX. Yep. where it came you know just bolted in mm. as standard um but yeah and i think I suppose it's, it's a... like brand refreshing isn't it i, I yeah. suppose you know that kind of thing yeah like when, when they did the extra four voices for the um lbsx yeah because you know. when we, we were talking off air um about this actually replacing the the, the, the eight the eight voice version this just becoming the standard but it doesn't really make that i was just looking on their website and it doesn't seem to make that clear it talks about the m as it being an eight voice polyphonic four-part multi-timbre wavetable synth um but yeah i wonder if the eight voice version will be available at a lesser price now or or is this a you know a i don't know it's interesting 
to see what they do there. Uh, yeah, I suppose it, it should. It should work out to buy uh, cheaper, just buy maybe 50 quid or something like that to buy the 16 voice one. Mm. With the legend, and it does have the legend on the front panel, so people people will know. Ooh, people, people do like a badge. Oh, we bought the sixteen they? voice. Oh, look at him! Yeah, yeah, look at him, fancy well, pants. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes having options at price points matters. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. If they keep if they keep both of them, that would also make sense. Yeah. I wonder if they ever considered doing a keyboard version of it, given well, that's that, you know. That's that. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Give, given that you know companies like Groove Synthesis have come out with you know the third wave. I wonder, or because the this is like the logical successor to the microwave, which was a kind of a logical successor to to the original PPG waves. Um, uh, but the, did the microwave ever get a keyboard version? I can't remember. Was there a keyboard version of that? Or was it just a rack mount? Yeah. I, I don't remember. remember it was only a rack mount. I yeah, yeah, I don't remember yeah. a rack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with just the big red dial. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, the M has two of those. Uh, it does stand out. It does look, you know, it, does, it certainly you know, looks the part of the family. Ooh, two but, knobs. That's rare. Indeed, yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, so the Waldorf M 16 voice available now for a measly 2,308 euros. Um, available from waldorfmusic.com and other good retailers uh, as well, I believe. Mm. Um, of course, if you already have. The original Waldorf M, you can just buy the expansion board and uh, get the same thing. So there you go. Uh, right, let's see. Um, let's have... Well, let's get, let's get into this one. Um, so, Ash and Sound Machines, a few years ago, really, really shook up the synthesizer world um, with their first and as yet only instrument, um, the Hydra Synth. Uh, it came out originally as, uh, as a 49 key model with a desktop version as well. Then they brought out the fantastic Hydrosynth Deluxe, which was a dual Hydrosynth, so by Timbrel, um, big, very big, powerful machine. And um, then they also backed that up at the other end of the scale with the Explorer. Uh, all of these, of course, featured, apart from the desktop module, all of, all featured polyphonic aftertouch keyboards and you know, a huge amount of sound generating sound editing possibilities a, a fantastic package a great price a great sound it seems that everybody on the planet has one except me and so i really cannot talk with any authority about this but luckily um my other two uh, colleagues here have both got them so you've got uh, mm. kent you've got a deluxe and a standard we'll call it the standard the 49 mm. key version yeah. uh manny w- what have you got I have the deluxe, the standard, and the desktop. Oh, get him. It's a competition now. I don't, I, I don't have all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you leave the little one behind. Got um, to catch them all. Got to catch them gotta all, catch, indeed. Got to catch them all. Yeah. Oh, look, there's there's actually people in the chat that are saying they don't have one either. I'm not alone. Yay. Um, but, Ooh. yeah, so it's been yeah it's been around now for, what, three years? Three years. Yep. Yeah. yeah, three years, yeah. And what an impact. I mean, we had Glenn Darcy on the show some while back, and you know, he, he, even then he was still just like blown away at the response. Um, but also, you know, not at all surprised because he had huge faith in this product, and rightly so. It's, it really has been a bit of a, for want of a better phrase, a game changer. Um, I, I think it's, it's shaken up, shook up the market quite a bit and has had a, a, an impact. And of course, the, it brought back poly aftertouch as something that is now becoming more and more prevalent uh, across lots of keyboards. And yeah, we just looked at Waldorf finally. there. Yeah, finally, poly aftertouch is making a comeback, and it's all yeah. to do with with the Hydra synth. Yeah. And they've been releasing, say, these different versions of the synths over the last three years. But uh, a few days ago, they announced version two of the firmware which um, as well as fixing a few bugs and, and improving a few workflows brings in a whole uh, range of new features and uh, I thought given that you guys have um, both got them and um, have updated your your systems that maybe you could tell me and our audience a little bit more about it so I don't know Manny do you want to go go first and give us a an idea of what what we're looking at absolutely so well first of all for everybody in the chat and watching um, for 
100% accurate details. Make sure you watch all the videos that AF, ASM put up because they did mm. a great job of breaking down little short videos on it. Um, I'll touch on a, a, f a few things I've been playing with, um, and that mainly is the LFO modes, what they call the step mode. So now when you use the uh, step LFO, there's a triggering mode that you can s go sequential through those steps with each new key press. So um, if you're using that for uh, pitches, you know, mm -hmm. you can actually use have like one note triggered arpeggios. Uh, what I've been using it for is expanded, synchronized filter effects. Right. So that um, you can have those particular values at certain things. And the cool thing is it doesn't just advance with notes you play. It advances with the arpeggiator notes. Oh. So now you can have really nifty different articulations on different notes of your arpeggio. And mm -hmm. it gets really fun when you have two or three of them with different prime number numbers of cycles. So you get lots of non-repeating patterns. Mm. So you can have uh, non-repeating filter, FM index, resonance, uh, decay times over a arpeggio. Um, I did a lot of programming last night, if you guys want to hear stuff later. but Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's one thing that is... I'm sorry. I'll get in front of my mic, Dieter, and therefore I won't be so loud. <laughs> yes. Um, so that's one thing that's really cool. Uh, and then, of course, they add the uh, uh, quantized mode to the envelopes. So you can do very similar things um, in the actual envelopes as well and use half-stepped envelopes. Mm -hmm. um, and... Lots of possibilities there. Makes so many things easier that you had to really cobble together. And then it's got probably the most powerful mode, which in some ways the irony has got to be on Kent thinking, hmm, you can now do per voice modulation. So every mm. note can have a different something. And that can be tastefully done in minor ways. Or if you wanted to, you could pick up a patch that sounds as bad as that memory mode when it showed up at his house. Yeah. <laughs> But it's it's really powerful stuff, and um, like I say, um, I've really enjoyed digging into it. If um, mm. if you want to really do some virtual analog things now that cover the tiny little places it didn't already, you can mm -hmm. do a lot of stuff with that. Cool. If you're into uh, time sequence based uh, articulation things, you can do a lot of stuff with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of a lot of power there. Um, one small thing, they massaged up the uh, aftertouch response curve a little bit on the Deluxe, which I'm happy with because mm -hmm. for me, it, I'm still getting used to the Deluxe curve versus the one on the uh, original 49. Still have a little bit of a soft spot for the 49's version. Yeah. But uh, um, no, I, it's, it's, like, it's not like a whole new synth, but a lot of things um, that a lot of people are going to really find useful, they really mm -hmm. popped it in there. Yeah, definitely. Ken, um you downloaded it last night, I believe, and as soon as you started playing with it, you noticed mm. some improvements. What what were your sort of initial thoughts? Well, one of the first improvements I noticed was there was um, at whatever level it was, there's some there's better commu communication on the USB um, mm -hmm. in terms of the hydrosynth being detected, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in Cubase. <laughs> uh, yeah. <coughs> and it didn't matter which way you fired it up. Um, the hydrosynth never turned up in, mm -hmm. in the... Um, and weirdly, it used to. But it was since the last um, bug fix that they released, then it started doing this. Right. But then there was the weird thing with the expression pedal as well. So that's all cleared up. Cool. And, and so there's, there's obviously been some little bugs. Um, the one thing I did check, I must admit, was to fire up... Um, Oddity 3 and make sure that the uh, pitch and modulation wheels were working on the Oddity oh, yes. 3 because for some reason it wouldn't work with the Hydro the first time around. That's right. Yeah. Um, so I checked a few other things as well and everything seems to be fine. Yeah. Uh, so it, And it seems more encompassing. But yeah, again, as you know, but like Manny said, the, the uh, aftertouch response on the 49 has this more pleasing kind of response mm. than than the hydro did but now like you said you can, we can change the curve now and you get much closer to that uh which is always a good thing because that, that that seemed to have been where they got it right straight out the gate yeah and then somehow uh, 
lost that response along the way for whatever reason it was. Yeah. Um, so that now that's back, and it's it's uh, yeah, and it's a, a better keyboard for it. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, sure. And it was already a brilliant one. So, mm. one one of the things um, that I have been reading a lot of, and it's really a tiny little thing, I guess. Into it's, it's it's a it's a feature fix was that I think the the local mode there was a problem with huh. saving local mode and now that's been but that has been fixed in this thing so those kind of niggly little bugs have been yeah you go to another addressed. patch and it would it, it, it would turn off right okay that's not good um, well it was one of the, it's kind of funny it's one of those things that you understand why they did what they did the first implementation yeah um, because you could literally I think somebody made the joke. It could show up on Kent's doorstep because nobody realized that. Oh, I left local off, and now nothing else sounds. And I took it out of my out of my DOS setup. So, right, you know. But uh, yeah, but yeah. Now, so yeah, so they have a more consistent uh, uh, utilization of that. So yeah, that you know? yeah, absolutely. I mean, overall, I mean, both Kent and I are big aficionados of it, and they've made a great thing even better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, my list of. 2.01 list is now down to this so you know yeah. <laughs> excellent um i thought we'd um just play that they released you know, as, as you alluded to earlier there was there's a series of, of videos on the asm um youtube page that uh, goes through each of the main uh changes and, and new features uh, individually but there is a, a video that is annoyingly still processing in my little queue here so i'm just going to talk for a few more seconds until that's finished but there is a, a video that kind of gives us a, an overall view and then maybe once we've seen that manny did you want to maybe talk through and demonstrate some of the things that you've been messing around with yeah yeah we can do yeah, that we'll do that okay um we're still padding here because that little spinny <laughs> wheel is still spinning um it, it's my fault i've i've been i was so rushed uh, before the the show because of that bear engineers i was typing things up yeah. one big um, thing for the non-deluxe owners was expanding the user memory the extra three banks of course yes yeah because you've got so, now eight banks across, and all of them yep. yeah, yeah. All of them, so so that's that's, not, good. that's that's huge too yeah, absolutely. Well, okay, spinning wheel has stopped. Let's press play and uh, enjoy this demonstration uh, of the, the new features of the Hydrosynth 2.0.
some of that stuff yeah. that it really does and and of course yeah. that video really conveys the fact that this is a 2.0 up 2.0 update for all of the hydrocins whichever f- flavor you have and you'll get all of that stuff built in mm. um it's such an incredibly yeah. versatile instrument isn't it yeah i mean dominic really does a great job showcasing all the little mm. things that they popped in there and yeah. you know um if you see the type of things i've been doing on hardware jams that interplay that has the timbrel and or panning and or other things like that um that's a really cool thing that it's all synchronized and it can be all yeah. broken down and and, and and stuff and yeah ton, tons of tons of tons of fun yeah. stuff in there so so what have you what have you been cooking up with your hydrogen then well um let's go here or get him with his fancy camera angles oh i don't know <laughs> look at no, all that <laughs> no. showing you up ken yeah so it's very similar to what they had in the demo I have a multi here using what Dominic showed off. Basically, timbrel changes. Over magic one key playing. So that uses like all those little types yeah. of trigger modes to, to mm. pop that kind of stuff in. Yeah. So that's that's again something I popped in last night. Um, but basically, I'm going to go back to my other thing here because you can't see my face. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but basically, in some of the in some of the single modes, let's go here. So this is a voice mod FM patch. Okay. So every other note alternates the stereo field and a different amount of FM. Right. So just in playing. Or of course you wanna put the arpeggiator on. Simple stuff, but very effective. And yeah, to yeah, build absolutely. that any other way is is is, is really tough. And of course, mm. you could do extremes. Um, let's see. The other one that was interesting here. So, this is because they have these new features, and they let you approach some of the envelopes and LFOs in a different way. Um, I can now hack a behavior that I hope they'll consider putting into a <laughs> newer newer uh, up- update, which is um, alternate modes to trigger envelopes. And one of the ones that is particular for me is after touch threshold triggering. Mm-hmm. So in other words, you can actually yeah. trigger events when you cross a certain point of any controller. So using the new implementation, I was able to hack a version that does that. So okay. This is kind of subtle, but cool. So check this out. Mm. Basic synth sound. After touch does some vibrato. But if you push enough, So Very good. some more little programming tricks that are available with those various modes. Yeah, so, sounds yeah. great. Kent, what have you got up your sleeve? <laughs> oh, oh. Come Nothing. on, you... No, okay. no. No, um, yeah. hair, mostly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, there's things I'd like to try, but you know, you, you know what it is. Mm-hmm. Time. Time, mm-hmm. my friends. Yes, no, I, yeah. I, I was only, I was putting on the spot there. It was just... <laughs> I, <coughs> but I mean, yeah. you love yours as a controller as well as the synthesizer itself. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it is your centerpiece of of your. We don't yeah. see it there because it's right in front of you. But yeah, um, yeah. 
you and, love it. I, and I suffer f like m many people with the um, the ribbon strip is literally a, a dust gutter. Well, do you, <laughs> Somebody in the chat called it. Somebody a dust called it gutter. a dust gutter. Yeah, yeah, and I mean that is so apt. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's you know if you're looking for lint, that's the place to go. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't find that with the um, the Polybrute, with its ribbon, but I guess, I don't know whether it's just a design thing. It's a lot smoother, and because it's it, it, it's wood effect, like the yeah, rest yeah. of that whole thing, it doesn't seem to, to gather much. And I always use it, so it's, it doesn't get too dusty. Well, I just uh, wish that the go. strip actually went right up to the edge of the metal of the casing. Oh, I see. There's ah. this little trough that runs all the way around. You, uh, okay. you get a dog hair in there, mate. Like, it's there for life. <laughs> it gets wedged in there. Air dusters to the rescue. Won't get it out. No, really? No, no. Well, yeah, once it gets stuck, mate, you can't back around. I wonder what okay. ASM will do next, though. Because they've, they've had such a resounding success with this thing, and then they've just made it even better with this, this 2.0 update. You know, where do you go? I mean... Well, they've done when, controller using, when you reach the top, using that cable tech. Mm -hmm. True, yeah, control. Uh, I mean, would, a range of 37, 49, 61, 88. Mm. Oh, could we wish for that? When we spoke to Glenn, you know, they, they clearly got things going um, mm. in, in the background there. And he mentioned something about licensing the keyboard technology, mm. the aftertouch uh, stuff. And we thought that that might have that might have been what Waldorf were using, but Waldorf actually had no, this is a new Fatar keybed. So we still don't know, you know, what's what Glenn was alluding to there. But I just I just it, it worries me because I, I want them to be and continue to be as successful as they have because they've with their first instrument they've really changed the game. They've really made such a huge impact that I want the next thing to be just as good, if not better. But how do you improve on something that is so good? I mean, do you do a physical redesign? Um, do you add thing, extra things into it? Do you, do you then sort of water down, you know, what makes the hydrosynth special? The hydrosynth special, or do you come up with something really new and, and different and exciting again, which isn't easy? Let's be honest. No, that's no, not easy. What do you recommend? Do Where do you think uh, ASM might go? Well. I, I mean, I think you just have to look at the market and maybe step back a little because how long did Sequential make just a profit five? Very true. Okay, and mm. other than, thankfully, getting rid of the Rev 2s and moving forward, <laughs> um, you know, they didn't have to do anything because it's it's a valid instrument in and of itself. It doesn't have to keep changing. I mean, yeah. because we have all these digital control systems, we have these abilities to do firmware to add features in ways that they didn't back in the day. Um, but in reality, I think the hydrosynth as an engine, regardless of its packaging, you know, stands on its own. Mm. So do they have to take the hydrosynth somewhere? Absolutely not. You know, so I'm thinking that, well, you're going to do what Sequential did. You, for any of their companies, you just have a different product that does something different. It might mm. utilize the underlying technology in a completely different package uh, with a different interface that stress that, um, how can I say, emphasizes certain aspects that people are looking for. This will segue next to when we talk about the Kodamo thing, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, in that you have options for what f fits your workflow, what your performance style is, and what feature set you need. Or like, I mean, look what Dave Smith did when DSi came back. You had your mm -hmm. Tetra, you had your Revolver, you had your Poly Revolver. Mm -hmm. I mean, all those yeah. things had all different little twists on some fundamental similars of hardware. Mm -hmm. um, but they didn't have to reinvent the wheel. So I think we'll probably, s the natural assumption is a spectrum of products. Mm -hmm. You know, they might embrace new technologies and things that they're working on that we just don't know about. Um, so, you know, they can rest on their laurels because they really they made a really good first synth. They did, yeah. And, you know, they've absolutely mm -hmm. earned that. Uh, Kent, what do you think? Where, where, where do you think the Hydrosynth or ASM might go in the future beyond, you know, this wonderful instrument? I mean, 2.0 is going to keep this thing going for some while yet for sure but you know yeah what do you reckon yeah. uh, I, you know what i'd hate to say i mean it, it's i mean there's so much going on out there anyway um that uh, you know if, they, if they're going right we'll come up with something that's like you know radically new and different again 
mm. or, or tried to make a huge impact again like the, like the hydrocins did mm -hmm. there's not many areas they could dip their toes into this because there's so much going on from so many other companies yeah so yeah maybe maybe they just sort of like sit back and you know sales are good let's enjoy the sun yeah absolutely. you know right because I mean, Look, you, you, every video you watch on YouTube, you know, and, and the guy's got a hydrocins in the, uh, uh, one side of his room or something like that. Well, apart from you, Robbie. Yeah, not here. You're <laughs> odd. <laughs> <laughs> you're not one of us, you know. I like to be different. It makes yeah, me stand so, out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It could, it could, or they could have some, you know, super duper drum machine in mind. Or could yeah, be maybe they just go anything. Yeah, yeah. But, brr, we, well, we've we've sh sh shook up the synth world, right? Let's do drum machines or let's do something else. That'll right. be that'll be interesting. Yeah. Well, they do the right. teenage teen, teenage engineering um, sort of like uh, model and go. Well, let's start making wallpaper. You don't know what they could. <laughs> put. They could do that, yeah, but very very expensive wallpaper. Right? Indeed. Yeah. Well, here's what we do know. We do know they obviously have manufacturing capability, and yes. we also know they have a talented team of digital coders. So they do. Yeah. You know. Yeah, anything's Absolutely. possible. Any, yeah. Any, anything's possible, you know. Yeah. There you go. Indeed. If um, if you want more information on uh, Hydrosynth 2.0, just go to ashensoundmachines.com. It's all there. If you are a Hydrosynth owner, I'm sure you've already downloaded it, but it's a free download. Did they also update some of the um, support tool software? Yes, yeah, so there's yeah. there's been updates yeah. all around mm. to to accommodate for all these new things. So, yeah. um, and it's all completely free of charge for mm. existing Hydrosynth owners across the board, and every instrument in the the Hydrosynth range, all four of them, all benefit from this update. Um, I think the only thing that doesn't go across the board is the extra memory banks because the Deluxe already, already the has Deluxe. it. Yep. Yep. So yeah. you're you're all now uh, sort of level level playing field there, mm. uh, to a point. Um, so yeah there you go hydrosynth 2.0 and uh, let me just uh, show the there is uh, ashensoundmachines.com and uh, you can download the updates everything's there i'm sure you all know how to get hold of that um sir so, let's see um well let, you mentioned it let, let's talk about it so i was hoping today to be able to give a sneak little glance at uh, a brand new synthesizer that's coming out at the end of this month so only a couple of weeks to go and it's been very exciting and two people on this screen have been uh, to different degrees obviously mine's the lesser one uh, well, I don't been, know about that uh, uh, <laughs> from what I've heard I think you've you've had a bit much bigger influence um, but yeah so um, this is the new instrument from um Kodamo, Kodamo, I've never I, I still need to ask Stefan. Uh, do you, have you had a definitive answer? Is it Kodamo or Kodamo? Not that it matters, but Well, I don't want to find myself down there, so I will say Kodamo. <laughs> okay, there we go. Um we'll we'll just yeah, agree to disagree. Potato potato, Kodamo. Oh, yeah. oh, that always works, yeah. Anyway, um so um they they um have produced a brand new synthesizer. It's called the Mask 1. And it uses a technology called bit mask synthesis. And we'll, I'll ask Manny um, to get his kind of explanation of that in just a moment. But they have been uh, this week starting to drop a few little teaser videos mm -hmm. of some of the, uh, the sounds that it's making and some of the features. Because I, th I think, uh, you know, Manny said to me earlier this week, it's definitely more of a performance synthesizer with you know playing in mind some of the features that are in there um so yeah let's just let's, let's have a look at that so what what i've done is i've taken the liberty and i hope stefan doesn't mind too much but i've taken the liberty of taking his videos and kind of stringing them together um into one sort of little uh, overview but yeah um check this out this is the the mask one
go that's a little taster of what is coming in a couple of weeks time with uh the mask one which uses this technology called bit mask synthesis and i think manny would probably make a, a better attempt at describing it seeing as you have been involved in terms of sound design i, I hear uh, yes i have fortunately uh stefan asked me to uh participate and i said heck yeah so um Actually, there's a lot of discussion in the in the chat already going on uh, about what this is. Uh, coming in from high altitude, getting into details, it's a two oscillator subtractive synthesizer. Uh, for reference point, think something like the Korg DW8000. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the basics. Okay, but it's got a lot of really interesting twists, which tie into the comment made earlier. There's something to be said for a very good sounding niche instrument that does two or three things really well that nothing else does and this is where i think this machine falls into mm. um, and part of that has to do with what the bit masking synthesis allows you to do so what it does it basically it's got a bunch of digital waveforms but you don't have to read them in just one manner so the various bit masks are different ways that they read the data out of there so instead of having as you see on the front panel there's like eight families of waves there's, I think, 16, 32 variations of each one on how it reads that data. And all those timbres are completely different. So whereas the DW8000, I think, had 16 waveforms, if you add this all up, it's something like, what, 512-ish yeah. um, on that. And some of them sound exquisitely different. The twist is, if you look at the pa front panel graphic uh, on it, it has little signal flow. It has this thing that has a little... Uh, uh, there, yeah. See if you nope. can blow that up and freeze it. Anyway, it's uh, gone. you could. <laughs> so you don't just pick a static one. You can modulate across it, and that's what's really cool. Mm. So you can use controllers and envelope to actually modulate the mask that it's using at any one time, and that gives a very unique timbre shift uh, in your sound. And what's kind of cool about it is, in the classic PPG sense, it's stepped, mm -hmm. which is actually really kind of sweet. So it has this characteristic that you can get that you can't get anywhere else. On top of that, it's got very good sounding effects, and personally, it's got a wonderful sounding digital filter. I mean, I think the demos that they played kind of show that's a pretty sweet sounding digital filter. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just half of it. Look, I got the Essence FM Mark II, mm -hmm. and great interface on one of the more complex synthesis systems out there. They wanted to go a completely different way. There's no menu diving on this thing. There's basically one button 
for everything. They mm-hmm. wanted it to be simple, to sound great. And they have all these great ar- arpeggiators. But more importantly, they have these articulation and, and modes of playing the instrument that in a weird way is a really unique take to get kind of stuff that people seeing like on the Osmos. Mm-hmm. Okay, in a package that anybody could pick up in a second. Okay, they have mixed poly legato modes. You have regional settings for when you have glide and, and it'll sense that. And you saw in some of those patches, you're thinking, how's you getting like three sounds out of this mm. or four sounds out of these patches? Mm-hmm. And that's because they have these mixed modes. So you can set it up so within an octave, it's going to play your notes legato as opposed to individual. Mm-hmm. And the, ar- the arpeggiators can also do that as well. Right. So in a real time yeah. standpoint, as a performance keyboard, as you saw in, in that little clip, it's like, what else does that? And I'm not aware of anything that does that, mm. you know, um, and uh, more power to them because I think it's really nice sounding. It was very fun to work on um, is superficially simple by design as the engine is. You get a lot of interesting stuff out of it. And to its credit, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to do it. You can kind of do the old analog style. <laughs> Well, what happens if you just put this one and twist that knob twice? It's like, whoa, that's cool. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. to be said for that. There's a Absolutely. lot to be said for that. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it uh, and I'm getting it out because I think uh, it, it, it deserves a, a look, especially if people like to do, um, you know, live live settings where they use a lot of arpeggiator or other work or really want that analog sound mm. um, with a twist because it's uh, mm. analog sound with the twist. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm really excited. I was so looking forward to today because it kind of it was supposed to arrive this morning and then uh, a couple of days ago um his majesty's uh, revenue and customs decided to get involved as they seem to do with everything Brexit. Um and they put the uh, so they put the mockers on it and it's now I think it was at st- it was leaving Stansted Airport. So it's in the country. It's all paid for now. Um, but it's coming here, um, and we will be doing a, a special on it um, probably in April, uh, late April, maybe early May, because um, I just need to get everything you know set up and in place in the new in the new studio. Um, Kent, you've had a listen to it. Um, you've had a, a little bit of a look at it. I mean, given that you don't obviously know a huge amount about it, any thoughts on you know just initially you know the sound of it? You know, is it something that would appeal? Yeah, it was actually. Um, because I, I, I'm a big, big fan of machines that can have different kinds of uh, responses, different kinds of actions and tones, mm. depending on what you're playing on the keyboard, where you know yeah. where you are on the keyboard as well. Um, so yeah, um, so I've got to ask a question. So <coughs> how much? Um, good question. Um, I'm just I just want to see. So I was given a price a while back, but I think that price might have changed. And I just want to see more if of a got quote it was it than a, than a price. It was it was kind of like a, a pre-production estimate. I think I, I, honestly, I um, I don't want to say anything out of place or out of turn, mm. but I think you're looking. I would say around the two thousand euro mark, really? give or take. Okay. Wow, okay. I thought that, that they were shooting for like seventeen ish. Yeah, I think I think something might have changed, unless oh. I've, I've I've read that wrong. Um, yeah, I think seventeen nine nine was the initial price that they were talking about. I think when it it um, it debuted at uh, Synthfest in no, not for Synthfest, um, or was it Synthfest in front? It was one of the French shows, and it debuted down. I think that they put you know the, a, a target price of of one seven nine nine. Yeah, I Matt, think Matt that, put it in the chat. It looks yeah. like it's about nineteen oh eight. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's um, there. You go. Yeah, nineteen oh eight on the website. So yeah, it's kind of around that that sort of mark. Um, but like you say, I, whenever I think about you know where where is synthesis going next? What's the next big thing? Is there a next big thing? Have we had all the big things, and now we're just seeing what you know what, what we can do with those things? Uh, in greater detail I think you know because I, I often talk about you know this cycle you know we, we went from analog to digital to modeling and then we kind of went back to analog but virtually and then we went kind of back to digital and now we're seeing more modeling so everything's kind of going in this circle 
and every time we go round, we improve on what happened the last time. We found out the problems, and now we deal with them better. And technology is advanced. Yeah. But when I saw this and heard this, and you know, I was a big fan, still am a big fan of the Essence FM. I think it's a fantastic implementation of FM synthesis because it doesn't dumb it down in any way. No, it doesn't. But it makes it more understandable and accessible through the fact that it's got this wonderful touchscreen paradigm and you know and it's super powerful i mean uh, there's hundreds of voices of polyphony and you can you can build layers and stack those together in programs and then stack those together in performances and god knows how many thousands of operators all firing off at the same time it's just an incredibly powerful thing almost enough yeah quite yeah not not just that but um but I thought, yeah, what a, what a brilliant way to to kind of kick off a company's career with, um, you know, a really really different way of looking at FM uh, and making it, you know, super powerful, but also uh, infinitely more accessible mm-hmm. um, without dumbing it down and making it simple. When I saw that, I, I, I have no idea what bis, bit mask synthesis was. And I, as I was working on the manual, I started to to understand, you know, what it was doing um, to a point. But um, it was very obvious that what Stefan and his team have gone for is, as you say, something that is immediate and mm-hmm. um, surprising and powerful without making it super complicated. Exactly. So it Just the other simplicity of, of twist a knob or two. You yeah. can't break it, okay? Exactly. You're going to yeah. find something interesting. You can't break it. It's it's like I say. Look, I'm all for complexity. Of anybody <laughs> on the planet, I'm all for it. But, you know, but sometimes you just want to twiddle and not think and say that sounds really nice. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's the beauty of analog synthesis. Yeah, you, know, you yep. can't get away from the fact that you can turn on any analog synth, grab a you know a control or, or whatever, and start shaping sound, and it sounds. Uh, great whatever you do or it might not sound great but at least it's not awful whereas you know you take uh you know fm and you change one parameter and it can go from you know ringing like a fantastic doorbell to um just a whole bunch of noise and static uh exactly. with just one change right. so it takes i think it takes the best of both worlds it takes the best of you know digital synthesis and analog synthesis and makes it all really nice and accessible uh and it looks i've got to say a white synthesizer is is a nice thing to look at as well. I think somebody made mention it looked like the old uh, bit one bit ninety nines in terms of the panel yeah. layout. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. I like the I like the fact that they've maintained the use of those big chunky buttons. Actually, bring up a good point. Again, when people look at the price, I want to point out is that as an Essence FM owner, uh, they did not skimp on the hardware. Mm. It's really well built. I mean, it, it's you know they're not. <laughs> It's not Behringer level construction here, folks. Not quite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they they've definitely built they've built something that is strong and is well designed and well built. It's built to last, and you know the price point does reflect that. Yeah. And uh, you know I've I've not heard of any uh, anyone with a broken Essence FM. You know they they're right. solid. Those buttons are just you could. It's almost like you know the B fifty two buttons they used on the Sinclair. It's that same sort of level of quality, uh, build quality in there. Um, and I still haven't taken the uh, plastic cover off my screen of my essence uh, yeah. yet. In all that time, uh, neither have I. No, see, yeah, thankfully I'm not alone. Um, but yeah, so it's it's a really really great synth. Um, c- certainly, you know, when it comes to its spec. And let me just uh, share this you know, on for, the screen. I, I will say that you're gonna go. I gotta have it. When you find how those articulation modes fit to how you like to play, yeah, because um, it's a totally different twist on what Osmos is doing, implemented in a completely different way. Um, mm-hmm. But it has some dynamicism in it that comes very close to the types of things that you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, the one demonstration um, that he did was was the third the third one, because you can use velocity to control mm-hmm. the bit mask uh, selection. Combine that with different enveloping's from your filter and your bis mask, and then change that with the articulation modes. You get some really nifty things going on. And uh, yeah. like I say, you can't do that anywhere else. I mean, you can do it on an Osmos with the properly designed thing, but 
if you want to program your own sound, three knob yeah. twists, you can do it on the Bitmask yeah. and Hello Mr. Egan Matrix. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's just great to see, you know, a, a, just a, a brand new way, well, a, a new way of doing things. Spec wise, um, you know, it's 10 voice polyphonic, four part multi timbral, uh, five in the layered split mode, um, two bit masks per voice with 256 masks each. Um, you've got noise, you've got filters on there, one per voice, two pole. Multi mode. Yeah, multi-mode filters, uh, state variable self-resonant with pitch tracking, high-low band and notch, uh, four loopable ADSRs per voice. Audio uh, rate. And de- yes, and delta delays. I, th- I thought the delta delay was kind of, you know, the, that was a, a clever uh, thing. I'd, you know, so I'm, I'm basing this, you see, Manny's had his hands in the pudding. I've just had the recipe. Uh, so as I was reading, you know, going through this manual and, and doing stuff, I was like, oh, I can't wait to try that. And yet, yeah, but Manny's had his hands right in there and, and doing it. So um, I can't wait for this thing to arrive. Uh, it's got an arpeggiator. It's got loopers. It's got two LFOs per part with seven waveforms. Loads of effects in there. Uh, loads of modulation destinations and sources. Um, and the, those, those play modes, you know, polyphonic, monophonic, slurred. Mono portamento on legato, paraphonic, hybrid poly mono on legato, slurred paraphonic, mm. mono retrigger and poly retrigger. I mean, it's just mind blowing <laughs> stuff. I had to send one to Dodie, right? Well, absolutely, <laughs> yes. Um, 120 factory presets, uh, space for 400 user voices, um, five pin DIN, USB, uh, MIDI, uh, full size 61 uh, weighted. Fatar action keyboard with six velocity curves, six aftertouch curves, um, lots of controls, 23 buttons, two rotary encoders, pitch bend and mod. And it's just got this four digit red display. And I know when people have seen that, they said, oh, blimey, you know, how are you going to get into this thing? You don't need to. You don't need to. Exactly. That's the whole whole point. Exactly. So, yeah, um, a wonderful machine. And uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel because um, we're going to They're popping up stuff hourly almost, it seems. It's great. Yeah. Um, but we're going to have, we are definitely going to have a um, a deep dive session, um, which we, you know, we will announce on the channel as soon as we can get it all together. Um, yeah. So really, really interesting and just um, more power to them. I'm a big fan of their work. Um, oh, and one last thing. I think I've mentioned this before, but I want to mention it again. They get the award for the best designed manual cover that i've ever seen for a synthesizer it's gorgeous look at that it's just lovely graphics um and that's used and there's a and available and printed version it yes it comes printed in the in the box as well um but it's it's some lovely graphics on there um which i think deserve some appreciation so there's been a lot of thought gone into this um so there you go just thought i'd mention that so um yeah if you want to if you want to know more i think um the link has been posted in the chat by our wonderful moderators it's just uh codemo.org forward slash mask one um and go and find out more about it there and uh, place your orders uh, march 31st i believe is the launch date so keep your eyes peeled for that right uh let's see what should we do now? oh let's have a bit of fun let's do this um this is a uh, a new instrument that's gone into kickstarter and it's a little left field it's a little fun this is chompy Hello and club. welcome to chompy club today we are super excited to introduce to you chompy a magical tape music instrument my name is tobias and in this video i'm going to walk you through some of chompy's unique workflow To get started, why don't we begin by recording a new sample up here in Chompy's sampling engine. To do this, we just flip the mode switch into the upward position and press the Chompy key. And press the Chompy key. We can immediately play our sample on our chromatic keyboard down here. (laughs) Okay, but if we want to make a new sample and that one wasn't quite perfect, we can always press the key again. Always press the key again. Always press the key again. Now, for the purposes of this video, I think we should probably start with something slightly more melodic than that. Yeah, let's use that. It's best practice to move this mode switch into the downward position once we have a sample that we like, and that way we don't accidentally replace it with something else. Now, if we want to change the root pitch of our sample, we can use this encoder right here. 
To return back to the original recorded speed, just press the encoder. But let's say when we recorded our sample that we didn't get the exact moment we were looking for. This knob right here can control the start point of the sample window, and this one controls the end point. And we can use those to get the exact moment we want for our sample. If you click the encoders, you can also have access to an attack and decay envelope. But I kind of like the natural envelope that this one has, so I'm going to leave it the way it is. This fourth knob control. We could sit and watch the rest of that five minute video and it is fascinating and, and looks a lot of fun and incredibly immediate. You know, there's literally switch it on, press a button, boom, there you go, you're, you're, you're away doing some stuff. Um, so this is Chompy Club. I, I haven't done enough research to find out exactly what the origin or the meaning of any of that is. But uh, here it is. It's a, a new uh, Kickstarter project which launches on March the 28th. And uh, yeah, I mean, just it's this quirky, cute, fun, simple, uh, easy way to kind of get into sample based uh, music making. And uh, it looks a lot of fun. What do you think, Kent? Do you think you can see yourself sat on the sofa twiddling with one of these? Well, I know there's a lot of TR-909s that are going to be glad with for these. So the buttons. Get, 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 get the buttons <laughs> off them. Yeah, we'll have them. Thank you. It'll be it did, E-moms with screw It did have that feel that, you know, it's proper big, chunky, you know, yeah. stuff going on there. Yeah, um, it's yeah, it's a fun item, isn't it? It's It's not a toy. It's a fun item. Mm. Um, and how serious you, you are going to be with it is how you take it. So it starts off at Fisher Price, it can work its way up to TB303, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it looks all right. It's, it, again, it's going to be the same sort of thing, availability, availability, price, blah, 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 blah. But, it, you know, handy little sample you can, you know, carry around with you and play. Yeah, so. it, it, when I first saw this, I thought, oh, here we go, another hipster kind of, uh, you know, just uh, why? You know, what, what's the point? But the simplicity of it really won me over. Yeah, but, you know, cause there's, an, uh, there's an essence in there, isn't there, of, um, you know, like most fathers who are into synthesizers and they want to get, desperately want to get their kids involved mm, as well. Yeah. And it's like, you know, here you go. This is your introduction to sampling. So I'm like, come back with Blue Monday by by tea time, <laughs> and then we'll talk about getting you an E2. You know, it's a, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. it'd be great for that. And yeah, wish my I, dad did that. Yeah. yeah, I wish. Well, they didn't. They weren't existed when my dad was around anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think I, yeah, it's a quirky little thing. Like I say, yeah. price availability. Well, it's funny that because um, I was just looking for a, a price. It's a Kickstarter project, but because it, it hasn't launched until uh, the 28th, I, I'm struggling to find an accurate price. But Manny, you said you thought it was going to be around 500 or something? Well, again, just hearing what people said they've heard from other sites, you know, right. um, whether that proves to be correct or not, yeah, we'll have to mm. see. Yeah. Um, I want to point out, you didn't get to the part of the video that's the cool part, which is this is a looper with effects. Yes, and that's the, you know the whole point of it. And um, well, that puts a whole new color on it. Some well, similar to what some of the comments were in the chat. Um, mm. This loopers is not something that I would have it typically have an interest in because the ones that are out there, you know, it's like, do I want to de deal with the UI? And again, simplicity. They made this really easy to do a large type of things that people like to do with loopers. Mm -hmm. And for someone like me who might want to investigate getting into one without getting into like a sample trek or something, this has potential because it's got a bunch of big dedicated knobs. <laughs> you just trigger it, sample it, trigger it, sample it, tweak it on up. And later in that demo, you know, I have to tell you, it reminds me how underrated a kalimba is as an instrument because the yeah. little loop they got going on there sounds absolutely fantastic when it's pitched and processed. Mm. So, um, you know, again... It's a, it's a niche thing that does something particularly well, and if it hits your spots, I can see them being really successful with it. You know, I can also mm. see people thinking, you know, I for that money, I want something more contemporary or complex or whatever. So, yeah, um, thanks to X one hundred one in the chat who has just confirmed that it is um, four nine nine US 
on the Kickstarter, and then after that, you know, the retail price would be five nine nine. So it's not it's not as cheap as it might look because it kind of looks like a toy. You'd expect it to cost like one, but it it doesn't. Um, and I was talking with Robin Vincent earlier today, and he's been trying to get his head round the uh, Sonicware sample trek uh, for, for I don't know how many weeks because he's writing a review, and um, it just it just wasn't working for him in the, you know within his uh, modus operandi. It just wasn't clicking, and he kept uh, sort of messaging me saying, you know. What do you love about it? And I was telling him, and he said, oh, but it frustrates the hell out of me. And then today he said, yeah, but look, for the same price or not much different, uh, you've got this chompy thing and, and it's uh, instant and it's gratifying and it it really does you know, hit a spot. So I guess it's just what, whatever your, whatever works in your head. But it's, um, yeah, I mean, it's completely screenless. So, you know, everything has to be, you know, simple and, and well laid out. Uh, and it has uh, it runs off the daisy platform which i have no idea what the daisy platform is unless i'm sure wagyu will be able to enlighten us uh, in the chat but apparently because it runs on the daisy platform it's um very easily uh, easy to do things like firmware upgrades and uh, firmware mm -hmm. upgrades and uh flexible programming options and so on and so forth um yeah, I mean, it just looks like a, a very interesting, fun little thing, and I'm sure you will see it, you know, popping up. It's one of those instruments you'll you'll find on, um, you, you'll see in pop videos. You know, the, the hip and trendy bands will all be playing one of these, and it looks rather cool, and it'll probably sell a, a bucket load because of that. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I don't uh, suppose the Daisy platform is a recycled HAL two thousand uh, tech, yeah. is it? I have honestly, I have absolutely no idea where it's oh yeah um, it's a small dsp I, yeah i've just got the i've just got the website here but I, i'm yeah. trying to talk and read at the same time yeah uh, it's not one of my fortes it's um, like a dsp version of uh raspberry yeah. pi or something it's designed yeah, for coding your own musical instruments like that, yeah. yeah yeah it's yeah. it's specifically oh, okay. designed for that, okay, that sort cool. of thing yeah, uh, if you want to know more about um, the Daisy platform, uh, just go to electro-smith.com. Uh, the link is actually mm. on the um, the website for uh, the the Chompy Club, and the name I like Chompy. It's just nice. It's got a nice feel to it when you when you say it. Uh, the handle, by the word. way, is also removable. Um, sorry, what was that? It was a very woody word. Woody word, yeah. Very woody. Yeah, it's not tinny. It's woody. I'd rather spend honestly. I would rather spend five nine nine on this than anything from, say, um, a particular Swedish company who do wallpaper <laughs> tables. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Admittedly, I'd, I'd like that's to see them do one that's sort of like in sort of like um, got carbon fiber finish on it or something well, like that. Exactly. You know, you got to be on the bus with this. <laughs> Yeah, there might be a cool of... girl sitting across there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. exactly. You think the <laughs> colour of your musical instrument is going to change? The fact that you just sat there playing with a you know, musical yeah. instrument is probably going to... You never know. Live in hope. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's kind of funny, like you said, Kent. If it was like natural carbon fibre, glossy, yeah. gold, uh, <laughs> gold uh, leaf for the uh, graphics on it, okay, then it's like, oh, wow, yeah, that's definitely worth the price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the site uses... Um, uh, utilizes the widely popular MX Cherry switches for its hot swap enabled two octave keyboard. So there is some kind of customization that you can do. Maybe not so much on the paint job, but certainly on the. Um, yeah. But there's also, actually, let me just bring this back in. They are doing a, a limited edition version over here, you see. All right. Which is pink. For the um, ladies, so I don't know, but I mean, it certainly <laughs> means that it, it certainly looks like you could potentially do that. And it's funny because um, there's a guy in Italy at the moment who's producing overlays for the sample trek. So oh, yeah, 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 and and they he's doing some fantastic work. And I think you know you can they're not they so it's definitely a thing. Yeah, I'm sure that you know if they don't do it, some clever stuff will come up with some way of. Customizing your your chompy sampler, but yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah, I like that. Anyway, um, enough of the um, the frivolous, um, and I don't mean that in, in a disparaging way at all. But onto something a little bit more uh, serious. Yes, um, uh, this is something new from our friends at Yamaha. 
and I think probably heard of them. Yeah, yeah, little known company. Mm, that's, a, that's a kick. That's a Kickstarter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they've um, they've released a new keyboard, which is kind of a blend of their their YC and what's the other one? The C CP. CP. That's it. The, 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 so it's kind of a blend of these two. But let's have a, let's have a quick look at the video, mm. shall we? <laughs> Is the uh, the CK sixty one or eighty eight? Whatever has happened to the seventy six note keyboard? Has it died? Have we lost it forever? I, it's shocking. Um, it's a stage keyboard. It it basically combines the the stage organ and the stage piano stuff that they've done. Puts it all into one big box. It's pretty lightweight. Has loads of stuff going on. Um, you know, you saw there it had audio interfaces, uh, Bluetooth input, so you can jam along with things using that technology. Great, you know, keyboards, uh, you know, key beds, and lots of controls, draw bars, the whole shebang. This is for the stage musician, the person that you know wants the just the staple stuff um, at their fingertips instantly, and can then pick it up and take it back into the studio and use it there as well. It's just kind of a, a workhorse, I guess. Um, Manny, I know that you weren't involved in, in this particular Yamaha project, but uh, any insights, any thoughts on this one from from your perspective? Well, you, you touched on the basics. I mean, this is a stage keyboard, basically. They're blending uh, components of the CP and the uh, YC lines. Um, what they're really going for here is a lot of sonic options in a mm -hmm. very light package with reasonable built-in speakers. Uh, I highly recommend all you chatties with all the Yamaha snark uh, putting out there. And I'm, <laughs> and, and I'm by no means a Yamaha apologist. Yes, maybe that is a little heavy on the uh, 90s cheese factor in that demo. Uh, you owe it to yourselves to watch the tech talk that Blake mm. did. Because in the very uh, first part of it, uh, Manuele Montesante does a demo on it that will frankly blow your ass. It's just wow. like phenomenal. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there. It uses the AWM2 engine from the Montage. Mm -hmm. It uses the stuff from the CP, uh, the, the Reface CPs in there. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a um, synth engine that's you know basically sample based. It's not the CS synth engine, um, but it sounds really good and it's got all the basics in there. Um, so, again, for, if you look at the way that the 61 uh, weight-wise, you know, I ain't, I ain't getting younger, you know. If I had to have <laughs> something like that, if I could drag something that's got that much sound, that much control with the draw bars on the front panel, 
um, you know, you can cover all your all your basics if you're gigging. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah, yeah. So one of the um, the images that's shown is just you know somebody you know carrying one in the backpack. You know, it's uh, it's that light. The obviously the eighty eight version is uh, is in a, a wheel case. Yes, yeah. yeah, but that's mm. to be expected. But yeah, Bluetooth audio input, USB audio MIDI interface, built in speakers, uh, battery powered as well. Um, yeah, I mean it's just really this kind of all round versatile stage keyboard it, it does exactly what it says on the box um and and doesn't sort of does make any apologies for it. it looks like it's got a great user interface as well you know the it's got a lot of controls nice um screen with lots of information coming back on it um, a little bit of a hark back of the uh, cs15 yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the tech talk points out the audio options especially with the way the bluetooth audio works um it's it's got some nifty stuff there you yeah. know it does look rather nice. Um, Kent, does this float your boat at all, or is this just a little bit too... It, it kind of does, and it kind of doesn't at the same time, but for different reasons. Um, yeah, I mean, do you know what? I mean, if I worked at Nord, I'd be a bit worried at the moment. Really? Yeah? Mm, yeah, yeah. So... That, that, they have pretty much sewn up the market in that regard, isn't it? Every time you see a Nord stage or a Nord something. Yeah, I know, but that's that's... That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was attempting to do quite a, a decent CS, CS80 brass as well. Yeah. And it is. It's got, uh, there's lots of nods back to all the 70s keyboards, even on the front panel. Mm -hmm. Never yeah. mind the sounds. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, I suppose you'd call it the, the Clavanova uh, replacement. But yeah. the one that you can yeah. take at, with you without actually Indeed, using yeah. the bolt lift. <laughs> so yeah i think it's, I, I think it's brilliant it's got it's got all the bits and pieces that you need you know the bluetooth the usb and mm. the outs even having the built-in because normally when you say oh it's got built-in speakers and it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. PSR, you know what i mean yeah 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 it's got the whole psr thing exactly whereas on the other on the upside it's also incredibly useful to have but if they're really really good speakers as well then mm. it, it can literally, you know, if you're doing a small pub or something like that, it's ideal. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think know, it's, so. it's, it really is the target market is, uh, you know, the gigging musician, you know, the, the club gigging musician. Yeah. Uh, the wedding, you know, band type person. This is, I mean, yeah. Um, my well, it, editor. It's doing everything in one box, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Sonic. Uh, my my um, podcast manager at Sound on Sound, she's, um, you know, she goes out and does, you know, she plays all over the world. Um and she said, "I've been looking for something like this for for years, and and yeah. here it is. It's you know she because she's only like five foot nothing. She you know she doesn't need something that's like huge to carry around. I mean, I bought her KX eighty eight off her because she could not lug that around. Um, so this is right up her street. Um, she's sold on it already. I think she's um, already going to put an order in. But yeah, it looks um, very versatile in terms. It has a target market, and it doesn't you know uh, pretend to be anything else. But it looks like a great all round." bit of kit um yeah so yamaha ck61 or 88 pick the one that you you uh prefer and uh yeah go for it um available now at uh, actually, price like, on that one? like two or three weeks actually I think. oh two or three weeks yeah, so, um, is there a price for that one as well uh da, 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 i don't think they put the prices on. oh there they go um no just no. the information let's see uh you see you, you expect me to be prepared for this yeah. but Mm. Um, Dieter posted in the chat the 61 they're saying is uh, 7 oh, seven nine. Nine. that's not bad that's good for for the 61 though so I guess the probably looking at that 1100 for the 88 something like that well, I don't know my, it, my dumb controller 88 costs more than that let's have a look yeah, so that's oh, doing pretty well okay. 88 oh, 1200 yeah. Yeah. 12, yeah 1200 there so um Oh, my SL88, which is just empty, was more than that. Yeah. <laughs> and that so, gives you some stuff to play with, absolutely. Exactly. So that's yeah. very good. That's voice. the magic of plastics, Mrs. Robinson. Yeah. <laughs> it does make me sad, though, that, that Yamaha, who I have obviously a very... And Manny as well, I guess, has a very soft spot for, don't seem to be making really exciting synthesizers anymore. I mean, yes, the Montage and the Modi X uh, have their place, but... I, I can't get excited, too excited about this kind of stuff. It's, I, I would love to see them just 
get back into making great well, I think they, they, they make most of their money from doing conventional instruments anyway, don't yes. they? Yes, yeah. And, you know, supporting schools world. and doing stuff like that, and, and motorbikes. Yeah. Yes, uh, and, and 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 having my son thrown off the uh, the pianos at the the Yamaha store in Soho, um, yeah. which was funny. It was really fun. The, the the bizarre thing about that was he was on the the ground floor level and he was playing. You know, a, you know, it wasn't it wasn't messing around. I thought around. it was Roland. I thought it was Roland. No, it was the Yamaha store. Was it really? It was. Yeah. No, the Roland store couldn't couldn't get us on the instruments quick enough. They just, yeah, do you want to play? Because they, they, they were messing with Oh, no, they, you go ahead. Go go right ahead. It used to be the other way round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back exactly. in my day. Back in my day. Yeah. But no, he, he was playing something he'd been learning in his lessons, and somebody came out and said, oh, could you, would you mind not playing these? These are for, de uh, for um, um, not demonstration, what's the word? Display purposes only. Um, but mm. if you want to play, you can go upstairs. So we went upstairs, and all the pianos upstairs were like, you know, they're really, really, you know, 125, 250,000 pound grands, and that you could play to his heart's content, I guess, because he wasn't in the shop window, you know. Yeah. Didn't look a young ruffian, but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's when, you went, when I went in there, it was obvious where Yamaha's priorities lay because you've got two floors of grand pianos, whether it's the, the Yamaha's. Uh, or was it the Becksteins they also make as well, mm. um, and all of that stuff. And then down in the basement was everything else. So you had brass, you had guitars, there was even some a reasonable amount of drum kits. And in the corner, literally out of the way, and, and in a really messy part of the showroom, were a couple of montages and a Modi X6, mm. none of which were connect. They're all turned on, but none of which were connected to any speakers or headphones. And that was it. That was that was their synthesizer display. Wow! And I was just like, oh, how the oh, mighty have fallen. Truth be truth be told, all the synth departments in a lot of the stores, that's what happened to for years. Thank God you have yeah. places like uh, you know Big City, Perfect Circuit, Noise mm -hmm. Bug. Yeah, you know we got a lot of. Yeah. Nice yeah, I mean, if, if you're expecting a product to come out from Yamaha that was gonna gonna have the same kind of impact that say that girl over there yeah. had, I wouldn't know, bro. No, no, it's not. It's not the way. It's it's not the way. I sound like the Mandalorian. Um, <laughs> it's a shame. Which is why I buy all the old ones because they're 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 really nice. I've got my SY22. Is, yeah, I haven't been old. that close to my SY22 for ages. <laughs> old. Yes. <laughs> About. But yeah, also just coming back, 76 note keyboards. So they, mm. they do a 61 and an 88. Has the 76 note keyboard died and gone away? I don't know. That's a good question. It's a really convenient size. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, it is that kind of nice halfway house, isn't it? It's big enough to. This, I have. What, one... what was the Hydra Deluxe again? Was it a 70? 70... 70... Uh... Oh, that was a 73, wasn't it? 73 so yeah. i only have yeah. one i only have one complaint about Go the hydra synth deluxe okay good they i know why they did it i can totally justify why they did it but it's laid out wrong oh when you take the original 49 and you add the other two octaves relative to the ui front panel mm. they added two octaves to the top not one octave on either side yeah right? And it drives me crazy that I can't line up <laughs> my middle C's. If I choose to do so and shift the octave on the Hydra, the UI is way off to the left. Yes, I get a great shelf over here if I'm yeah. somebody who would need that shelf. Good for coffee. It's yeah. like, ugh. <laughs> if, so that's my only quibble. It should, they should have yeah. taken the 49 no. and gone one on, one on either end. I agree. Yeah. I agree with you on that one. Yeah. Yeah. That, that does make sense, doesn't it? Yeah, because yeah, you, you, find, you find yourself doing the, you know, the octave down or the octave up to, uh, yeah. to, to stay in the area rather than go, yeah. go up. Be go up yeah, there. because yeah. to put it so the UI is where you want it, mm. I have an extra octave up top that I hardly ever use. Yeah. That's, I mean, but again, I don't need to stack gear on it. But you know, that's yeah. the only It's very less only heavy because of it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but other than that, they did a great job on it. So that's my one quibble. I wouldn't know. I don't have one. Uh, mm, never mind. Um, yeah, no, I, I just kind of because what have I? I've got the the DX one is a seventy three, mm -hmm. 
and the five is a 76. The Fairlight was a 73, I think. I don't know what... what, what the Moti V ES was a 76, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And the, the like the Korg stuff when they they did seventy six Oasis is seventy six Oasis as well. yeah Oasis yeah. so seventy six seemed to be so I, I I don't quite know why things like the DX one was seventy three and the Fairlight I think was but what were you doing with these extra few keys right. um, yeah <laughs> it's always been for me you want that lower octave to go to the low bass guitar E without transposing your keyboard yeah so that's why they start on E. What you need up top is sort of a different ball game. I mean, mm. the thing that's nice about the C to C range on the deluxe is the fact that, especially if you do electronic stuff, you like to sometimes go down below the low bass guitar E and down to the D and the C is mm. stuff you, you do quite often. Yeah. You know, um, but you know a lot of stuff way up there you don't really need. But I think most of seventy threes go E to E, don't they? Mm. Yeah, because that's the other thing is yeah. where they start and finish, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's there was. Just, uh, I mean, well, the mini started at F, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, Starts on F, uh, ends on C. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Anyway, but the yeah. seventy six is my preferred uh, preferred size in terms mm -hmm. of that because, like I say, it gives me my low E, and I actually will sometimes hit the G up there. Yeah. Uh, ah, these things. First world problems. But first world, first world problems. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, what have we got? Uh, we've got about 15 minutes left of the show. We've got, I think, just one more thing to discuss. It's nothing massively spectacular. I was hoping um, that uh, if Ben was going to be on the show, he'd be able to talk to us a little bit more about it because it's uh, part of UVI's Sonic Pass uh, program, subscription model, um, but it's also available uh, on its own as well. And this is uh, UVI's new effect called the Phasor. Uh, which is a phaser, but it's called phaser, um, and it's um, yeah, it's, it's a rather nice uh, phaser that um, does what phasers do really. I mean, there's nothing massively um, spectacular about it, but let's have a listen to it, and we can make our own. Mind. <laughs> should have queued up the uh, synthesizer examples probably first but anyway uh, you get the idea it does exactly what it says it does it's a phaser but it's it's done in the the typical uvi fashion which is nice and easy and loads of presets to you know get you started and then you can just kind of tweak from there um i haven't had a chance to play with this myself yet and which is you know why, why ben is so useful for many things but the fact that he has a sonic pass and he can just get grab this as soon as it comes out um so ben if you are watching you are being missed for lots of reasons but this one particularly tonight um but yeah i mean it's, it's, it's 29 euros on offer at the moment um so even if you don't have sonic pass uh it normally retails for 59 uh is currently 29 any um any thoughts on this do you get a chance to listen to it um form some opinions well since i knew i was standing in for ben i did download the demo and <gasps> i did mess around with this yay yeah and um i got it to install so it may be better than ben but just kidding <laughs> <laughs> um i have to say 
of all the examples that were in the demo, um, the one that they did on the bass, I thought was particularly nice mm. um, because it really fanned it up, gave a lot of that character there. I'll tell you what I really did like about it. It's a subtle thing, but the way that you can configure and warp the slopes of the modulation sources, mm -hmm. that was, that was kind of cool because it's sometimes neat to get a little different flavor on the way it comes in and out of the, of the shifting. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it sounded really good. And one of the things that I've always mm, have quibbles with phasers is how to get the sound you want at that right taste of wet, dry mix. Because mm -hmm. so many of them, it's like the, finding that sweet spot's really hard. Yeah. And either way, you're either doing it 100% and it's just like, okay, well, that's just over the top or it hits the bottom of the modulation and then something's all wanky. But then mm -hmm. you back out the mix. It's like, well, it doesn't really sound like a phaser. And this one... I was able to pretty, you know, idiot-proof get stuff that worked for me on what yeah. I was throwing through it. So um, I was mildly surprised. I mean, I I have a couple of the UVI things, and, you know, it's, it's, it's tempting even without the pass. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, their effects plugins are, are really good. I've got Thorus, which is their chorus, and I've got Sparkverb, which is their, their reverb, and that is in particularly a very... Uh, comprehensive and malleable reverb. It has a, a that kind of graphic interface where you can pick points on a like a map, so to speak, and just move them around to you know really fine tune that um, that reverb. So their their, their plugin effects are actually really really good and great value for money. You know at the moment you know twenty nine euros for for one of those is is pretty pretty damn good. Um, are you a phaser lover, Kent? I think when it comes to phasers, I'm a stoner. Okay, yeah. Dude, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've always been a bit of a, 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 an E400 stone phaser kind of guy. Mm. I, I, I've come away from phasers and um, flanges for quite a few years now mm -hmm. and steeped myself in reverbs. Oh. Well, what a surprise! They're tight in the <laughs> distance. <laughs> Go, yeah, no shit, so I look. Yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, again, the price is good, and I like, like you say, you, I like the way you, you know you can. There's dialing in that can be done, yeah, um, which isn't quite so intuitive on a lot of other phases. Mm. Um, but then you know, the sound toys one I've always liked anyway. So yeah, I think it still works. I haven't fired it up for a, a while. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's like with Windows 11. Probably yeah. appears upside down and in yellow. <laughs> <laughs> you never know with Windows yeah. 11. That, so, yeah, UVI's Phase All uh, is available now. A uh, limited time offer through April 1st, uh, €29 Euros down from 59 But, of course, if you have UVI's wonderful Sonic Pass, which is incredibly tempting, it's like €24 Euros a month, but you get everything that UVI do. Everything. There's no... There's no limitations, um, and I think every instrument or and every sample library and everything you can have uh, installed on up to three different machines. So if you are, you know, if you have a, a gigging machine and a live machine uh, and a, a studio machine, you can do that, or you can share them. Around. It'd be worth so it alone just to get the C7. Well, quite yeah. The C7 is a really really good piano. <laughs> it's a lovely, um, I love that piano. Yeah, it's very, very good. So well worth it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, UVI's phase is available now. Twenty nine euros on offer through till April first. Manny, I I don't want to let you go without you giving us a bit of a demo of the third wave. Would you mind? Because I have a really big thing about the third wave. I'm desperate to get my hands this on one. This is definitely there. a Robbie indulgence, isn't it? Yeah, and you <laughs> know, well, as soon as I can, I thought oh, I might as well ask. Oh, because uh, they're starting to come into the UK now. Um, so, because I know it's, Nick had one at Sonic State recently. So, um, but I know you've 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 bought it. You love it. You've had it for a while. Have you done anything really cool on there? Um, I think I've done some cool stuff. Um, there's uh, some patch demos up on my YouTube. Uh, oh yes, that, yeah. Uh, you know, it'd be worth checking out. Um, one of the reasons why I like, or I should say, love it, okay, is that, like Bob and the guys said, they didn't just recreate the PPG. Mm. They decided to say what would it be doing if it had continued to be developed, mm -hmm. um, and that's where I think this shines, okay, mm -hmm. because obviously it's got the inherent uh, wavetable engine with all the original PPG stuff and numerous guys on the web are, you know, will tell you that it pretty much nails the original sound, especially when you turn off 
the smooth mode and use the mm -hmm. original lack of interpolation <laughs> and stuff like that. It's got the analog filter, so you have all that going for you. They've added a full-blown mod matrix. They added the third oscillator. You mm -hmm. have VA oscillator shapes. It does FM. Now, mm -hmm. it's, quote, simple FM, but what's neat about it is oscillator 1, FM's 2, oscillator 3, I'm sorry, oscillator 2, off FM's 1, F, number 3 does 2, and number 1 does 3. So you actually have a big-ass feedback loop. Mm. Okay, and all your modulators and or carriers in that uh, paradigm can be wavetables. And each of the wavetables have their envelopes. So there's a lot of really cool things that can happen in there. Then mm -hmm. you add modern features, four-part multi-timbral and or layered, right? 24 voice poly, really nice effects. And other than limitation of two reverbs, all the other effects you can have per part. Mm -hmm. um, so on specs, it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Um, and it's got the sound. And more importantly, the front panel. I mean, mm -hmm. the most important thing when you're diving into some of these engines, you talk about how Essence uh, FM has such a good approach to FM on that. And you talk about maybe something like the uh, Waldorf FM or these other compressed versions of PPG things. These knobs are fantastic for getting around mm -hmm. quickly, okay? Um, by the way, they just did a 1.3 update that you can now oh. uh, import Serum wavetables if you should oh, really? choose. Yeah. Wow. So anybody who uses the Serum platform uh, on their computer, they can bring those in. Um, wow. And, of course, it has its own software that does it as well on board, which uh, I've messed around with. And it's got some quirks, but it's definitely useful. Mm. So um, I like it because it does, again, something very specific that none of my other gear does. Um, and sounds phenomenal doing it. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very much a chameleon um, in a way that my short-lived OB X8 was not. Okay. Right. Now, nothing around. Uh, nothing wrong with that instrument, but it excels in its space, and its space is narrower. Mm -hmm. This excels in many spaces, so that's why this one stayed and the other one did not. Um, so I'll show you some examples of the breadth of what yes, it please. can do okay yeah um so let's see here i think this is where i want to start um okay so this is you know a very much a traditional ppg type of sound with the wavetables doing all its stuff i just added lots of real-time modulations that you really couldn't do on the original hardware mm-hmm Change the character of the wavetable with the aftertouch, the pitch bend, and the mod wheel. So you got three, mm. three real things going on there with the swirls. If you want to do an FM type thing, again with the wavetables and with the modulations, this is an example of that. Arpeggiator, independent per part. Yes. Um, Very cool. Uh, there's a couple of, like I said, it does a number of different spaces. So let me show you something. Uh, okay, this is something that's just fun. That's just one of those things that's kind of fun. Um, let's see here. We've got... Okay, so in a lot of the modern digital synthesizers, some of you may notice you don't have bonafide filter FM. Mm -hmm. um, some have little limited versions of it, and frankly, a lot of it has to do with the CPU power that it takes to do true audio rate filter FM. But guess what? 
analog filter, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have to do filter calculations. So <laughs> you can do real filter FM to get some really grungy stuff. So that kind of stuff's really fun. Uh, let's see. Um, let's go to this guy here. So in the mod matrix, LFOs and envelopes can modulate each other. So if you want to get into you know modularity land type of evolving things, this is something that I often put on when I have to do work. <laughs> I, li I like to latch the arpeggiator and just load it up. It'll pick accents, FM indexes, filter settings, just randomly. Yeah. Yes, Ben, you can fall asleep to this. It's great. <laughs> Very nice. Um, let's see here. Oh, you'll get a kick out of this. Uh, let's see, which one is this? I think it's 74. So it's an FM synth. You can layer it. Mm -hmm. So this one's, uh, I call this 80s ballad. A little aftertouch. <laughs> you know with your dx type thing yeah um what can i say i love it and yeah it's so fast to get around um let me let me go to this other camera shot here to show you the the screen because uis are so important and often underrated mm -hmm. as soon as you touch any of the buttons on here it goes immediately to that screen okay cool. yeah. you have a user choice of jump mode or pass-through mode for the knobs Okay, so mm -hmm. if you want to not worry about your live settings. Everything on the display matches the order of the labels on the thing. And mm -hmm. you have dedicated controls for all the important stuff. You got four envelopes. You got four LFOs. You've got three separate wave envelopes. All those can go to all the different places in the mod matrix. You have time-synchronizable effects. They don't have time-synchronizable LFOs and EGs yet. Mm -hmm. um, and multi-mode uh, filter for your digital filter. It's a, a SEM style, so mm -hmm. you can have bandpass, high pass, uh, low pass, or notch on it. Um, the analog filter has a saturation, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you have your choice of compensation for the uh, resonance in terms of keeping the bass from dropping out. So the thing is, um, it's just really cool. I can't really yeah. say enough about it. And even with the Hydra, I mean, these two guys complement. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that I can mm -hmm. get very quickly that I can still do here. I can, things where I, on the Hydra I can't do on it, but there's certain sound landscapes I get up here that I can't get on the Hydra. And when you're playing, mm, I want to want to backtrack that. I can more easily get on this because it's designed specifically to be a VA right out of the box where the Hydra... Mm -hmm. You can make it sound really warm and lush. It just takes effort. And that's one of the reasons why people kind of have a slight negativity towards the, quote, sound of it. It's just because you have to teach it to be really analog in a good way. And, the, and the, uh, this guy just does it. I'm going to mm. bring up one of my favorite little sounds here. Give me a second. I've got to find it. This is kind of neat. I like that. 
so analog yes right out of the box and let's see if we get a good sorry oh. a different flavor of that <laughs> You can do your FM attack on it. Yeah. Again. The VA engine, the sync's just right out of the box. Mm -hmm. um, oh, here you go. This is for you, Kent. <laughs> uh, I hope I don't F this up. And again, because you can do so many modulations across the synthesis types and have them all simultaneously, similar to what you can do with the Iridium, you can do some very drastic stuff, and I'll make this the last one. Mm -hmm. Steel drums, right? Mm -hmm. of stuff like you say kind of all in one box oh i hate you now because you really made me want it even more <laughs> you know i have to say you know you talk about price and value right and i laughed because i watched ricky uh, tynes's take on this the other day and he loves it as well but i almost wanted to slap him it's like when you love it that much <laughs> and it does everything you want stop saying how expensive it is because it's worth every effing yeah. penny yeah yeah absolutely. plus you know they're all sequential guys and the customer service they take you know totally seriously i just got my ship back box to do the usb isolator you know mm -hmm. upgrade so you know costing me nothing send it back yeah. they'll pop it back in uh, they're a real nice crew and yeah. um yeah i'm wearing their shirt i just want to tell them right up the front this is to get you to uh do a little more <laughs> of my suggestions actually they've been very very open and so um, i'm actually really happy about that Cool stuff. They're, they're serious thought about it. But um, if you guys ever have a chance to play one in a shop, I mean, check it out. Yes, it is not inexpensive, but, you know, it will be, uh, it will, it will never leave you know, an upfront place here. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. You know, my wish personally, if at some point this Vitar action could be taken out and the Poly AT one be, could be put in, that would Ooh. be phenomenal. It responds mm. to Poly AT, and that's the other reason why I have the two of them right here. Sure. Yeah. because it gives me the ability to drive it from the, the other keyboard. Nice. But that, that, and this. What Where's your SYs? The TGs, are they? Oh, they're there. They're still there. <laughs> Never too far away. <laughs> And uh, the he, so the Hydrosynth would be my new master controller if the damn interface wasn't set off to the left. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I keep um, I keep looking out for an SY99, and every time one comes along, it's just something is either it's either a little too expensive, or I'm not in the position to buy, or I think uh, where would I put it? So I'm gonna it's gonna go on the back burner until I know I can give it a you know a suitable home. But yeah, that's that's what I want to get to next. Mm -hmm is the sy stuff but, uh, yeah yes. so mm. i want to finish with a couple of things one Go, see, yeah. i'm going to really struggle when my osmos shows up of course because now i got to put that in here yeah and then mm -hmm. because of wagyu i jumped on the Ana, anime amiga so who the knows when that's showing up of course yeah that'll be then interesting. i got that dropping in it's like oh god um <clears throat> but i'm not saying anything blake says something in his tech talk 
Right. I'm not saying it's about at the one hour, three minute, 20 second mark. <laughs> but I will leave it at that. One hour, three minutes, 20 seconds. Let me just write that down. I missed that. <laughs> I must admit, I wasn't paying a huge amount of attention. One, oh, three, 20. Now, I'm not right. saying it's anything, but, but he says something very interesting. <laughs> he says something very interesting. Well, I've, my interest is peaked. Which might mean nothing, and I could just be inking your chain. <laughs> it's been known. It's been known. Oh, okay. Well, on that note, um, I'm, I'm going to rush off and, and uh, have a listen and see, figure out what that, that is. Uh, but actually, well, if you go to that video, sit through the, the part where uh, Manuele does his part. I'm yeah, seriously, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's extraordinary. Yeah, I do like the Yamaha Tech Talks. Uh, and, you know, Blake's a very engaging character as well, so that, that always helps. Um, but yeah, some good stuff. Uh, X101 says in the chat, what Tech Talk? It's Yamaha tech talk if you go to is it yamaha synths mm -hmm. on youtube you'll find uh, that there and of course you'll you'll see uh, or hear manny uh, on a lot of those things as well um, well that's that's the uh, behind the synth i've only done oh yes, behind the synth. i've yeah. done one yeah. uh, tech talk yeah, which yeah. was actually very good yes if i may say so yeah i enjoyed that that was a very good one yeah um, um and if you have a if you have a montage get the sounds because the roads and the strings and that the, the free patches with it are mm. frankly pretty nice yeah, I, my my contact at Yamaha has gone very very quiet recently because I was, I was I was asking just to have a, a loner just to see, you know see what all the fuss of the montage was about because Ty Unwin is a big fan of it, um, so I just you know but they they went very quiet but that's not a bad thing at the moment so um, yeah I will try and get hold of that but I wonder if um, if there's going to be a third wave or any of that stuff at uh, Super Booth this year because. I might mm. have to steal one. That's an interesting point. I should leave my credit cards at home because yeah. it could mm. be tempting. Anyway, gentlemen, um, it's gone nine o'clock. Um, we have run over, but it's always good. Um, it's always, especially when we get great demonstrations. Manny, thank you so much uh, for coming on. Um, and please, any time, other time you're free on the free on a Friday, do let us know. Um, and of course, I will be in touch with uh, regards to doing something with the mask one very soon um and i'm really looking forward to actually meeting in person in october in for october Fest uk yeah Fest uk yes i am um, planning to be there i'll be plopping around the uk in the london area probably yeah. for a good four or five days ahead of time nice and yeah. then after that we're uh, planning to get some uh, anniversary related relaxation in paris with my wife oh so very cool. nice yeah. very nice so for all you miscreants on that side of the pond i may mm. uh come in and annoy you indeed we hope so um yeah it's been a, an absolute pleasure as always manny thank you so much for putting all that effort in you always you always do go the extra mile with your camera setups and your sound setups <laughs> and your Jesus demonstrations are, yes. yeah. no no it's no it's really good because it, it's i don't yeah. know there's a mic boot there's a camera boom in the picture there <laughs> <laughs> ah, who cares? no uh, really you, you go the extra mile and, and we're always thank you grateful for it so thank you ever so much for coming on um a really great uh, great welcome. guest Thanks as for always having me. I appreciate no it. thank you kent mate um thank you as always for for being here and for your contributions as always give us a final blast on the memory mode will you come on is it switched uh, on of course it's yeah. Go on, then. <laughs> that's distortion just <laughs> Is nice, isn't it? What, yeah, what, what reverb are you running on that? Well, as far as I know, there isn't one. But <laughs> for some reason, there is reverb being heard, and I have no idea because it's, it's not signed. It's not signed on the door or anything. I'm going. Hmm? Where's that coming from? But oh. somewhere, somewhere, it's quite nice. It's very mm. nice. Yeah, yeah think, lovely think, stuff. Yeah, I think it's the same one the eighties going through. So the, it. There might be a hardware one in here that I've plugged yeah. in and then put behind a monitor <laughs> or something. Down, yeah, and down it's down. permanently set to a nice reverb set. You, you have some hidden lexicon back it, underneath it. Yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure got a 244 in here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Sort of. Kent's house is just so massive. It's, it's a natural sound. reverb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this huge auditorium. <laughs> Hello, Wembley. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Pasadena. Yeah. Um, thank you ever so much, gentlemen. And of course, thank you to. All of you who have been watching, whether you're watching live tonight uh, or whether you've been watching on Catch Up, <coughs> Ian J. Cole. Um, so uh, thank you ever so much. We, we love that you come along every week. 
uh, and join in uh, in the chat and we hope you enjoy everything we do for you we'll be back uh, same time same place next week I don't know if we're going to have anybody on um, but we'll yeah we'll work on that and uh, um, yeah make sure you hit that like button hit the subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of all of our uh, shows and content and do make sure you come over to facebook where the main group is and uh, join in the fun over there and that's where you get all the sort of the updates and the chat amongst friends um we'll be back seven o'clock next friday until then have a fantastic weekend don't forget ramsey's on tomorrow uh 1 p.m uk time uh, I'm not sure if Jamie's doing a show this Sunday, um, but if he is, it's usually 7 or 8 p.m. Uh, UK time. Don't forget, of course, our American cousins, you have gone to Daylight Savings a little bit too early, as always. Um, so everything shifts by an hour. So you Jump, w- jump the gun again. Yeah, we're, we're, you're year. an hour later. <laughs> we're just too yeah. young a country to know any better. Damn ungrateful <laughs> colonials. Um, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, don't forget there's that, okay? And, of course, that won't sort itself out until the week after next because uh, we, we go to Daylight Savings at the end of the month uh, when, when you should, apparently. It's official. We, it's GMT. It's British. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, where, where time was... It's time was invented. Yeah, it was it's invented. Yeah. Invented with, in Greenwich and shipped out. Yeah, yeah shipped along with gravity, yeah. Yeah. Um, so no, yeah, we, we'll, we will see you next week, and if you're in America, we'll be an hour later next week as we were mm. this week, and then it all shifts back into normal again. So um, enjoy your weekends, everyone. Have a fantastic week. Stay safe. Play play with lots of synths, and uh, we will see you all same time, same place next week. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Take care.